So this is just basically what will happen to your system. So let's say this is your system. What can happen to your system? Your system, material can leave the system. Material can stay in the system, depending on your system. And material can get converted into other materials in the system. So this one, okay. This one is actually this one is actually dealing with your this one is dealing with your reaction. If you have a reaction, then you will have your material changing. Okay, you, you can have material being consumed and material being formed. So this one is for your reaction. Okay, so for now we are not talking about reaction yet. So you can have leave, stay, or consume and generate. So based on that, we can say that if your material is entering the system, we call it as input. If your material is leaving the system, you call it output. If the material is staying in the system, we call it accumulation. If there is new material form in the system, something is new is formed, we call it generation. And if you have input material that is consumed in the system, we call it consumption. So you have to understand what is the what, what does it mean by input, what does it mean by output, what does it mean by accumulation, what does it mean by generation, and what does it mean by consumption. So based on this one, two, three, four, and five, we can develop a general mass balance or material balance equation. We say that input plus generation minus output minus consumption will equal to accumulation. Meaning that whatever things you put inside the system plus whatever is generated from the input minus whatever is leaving the system minus whatever you have used in the system right consumption is consumed in the system will whatever is left after you plus and minus everything will be the amount that is accumulated in the system okay so this is the general mass balance equation so you have to know this equation every time from this point onwards whenever we are dealing with a mass balance problem you have to decide whether you have your input or whether you have generation or not, whether you have output or not, whether you have consumption or not, and whether you have acclimation or not. Based on that, you can simplify this equation to make your calculation much more easier. Okay, So the general process equation can be simplified based on your processes. So if it's a non-reactive steady state system, okay, so there is no accumulation because accumulation only happens when you have unsteady state system. For steady state, no accumulation. If this is a non-reactive system, if it's no reaction, there will no there will never be any generation or consumption. So the original equation you can simplify, you can put input minus output is equal to zero or input is equal to output. So most of the time, we'll be using this equation. Why? Because if let's say you have a mixing process, okay, for mixing process, if it's a continuous process, it will be always be in steady state process. If it's a mixing process, there is no reaction happening. So whatever you put in your system, so for example, let's say I draw here, let's say this is my mixer, okay. So I have a stream A and I have stream B here. I'm mixing it so I get C. So this is my feed one, F1, this is my F2, and this is my product. So if I have this thing here, whatever input I have must always equal to output because this is my mixer. Mixer where this is a continuous process. This is an open system. This is a steady state system. So meaning that no accumulation, no generation, and no consumption.
So if you have a reactive steady state system, you will have input plus generation minus output minus consumption. Still, we have no accumulation because our system is steady state system. Now, most system in industry, we can consider as steady state. So that's why it's rarely you'll find an unsteady state process in industry. It, the process can be unsteady state for a little while in the beginning and it and the end. For the most duration of the process, it will be in steady state. So moving on after this, all our process will be for steady state system. Meaning that we'll never have this accumulation term. The only thing is that First of all, we look at for non-reactive system first. And after that, after we have mastered, we have understood everything about non-reactive, then only we'll talk about reactive system. So these are the two equations that you will use. Okay, this one and this one. So I hope you understand until now how we get to this equation and why is it important for you to identify all the type of system that we have. Okay, if you have any questions, Please ask me now. Everything clear? Everything okay so far? Am I going too fast? Is there anything that I I need to repeat? Everybody okay so far? Okay. Should be okay, need some time to review back. Okay, very good. Okay. If no question, then I'll just continue a little bit. We only have five more minutes to go. So I'll stop here for today. Okay, so strategy to solve your material balance problem. Okay, these are the steps. So basically, if you read different reference book, you'll have different uh the step will be the same, but the uh, arrangement of the step will be a bit different. So that's why in our e-learning web uh, portal, I've uploaded two uh, steps or strategies to solve material balance from two different books. So if you look at it, one is from um, from a chemical, uh, I think elementary or elementary fundamental or something for chemical engineering, and the other one is basic and chemical engineering calculation. So you have two books there. So basically, they will have all the steps, but the, or the arrangement or the orientation will be a bit different. So I like to go on this step. So every time when you are placed, when you have a question, first and foremost, read and understand the problem. You have to read and understand what is the question asking you to find. Okay. So the second step is that you have to choose a basis. So this one I'll explain later. The third one is that draw and label a flow chart or also known as process flow diagram. And then this one will be a very, very important part here. Okay, this one and this one. This one is just a standard, okay? This one, everybody should be able to do this one and also this one. This one is not, an, not that difficult. This one is very, very important. Draw and label the flow chart. And then perform degree of freedom analysis. This one we'll look at in our class tomorrow. Write down all the equations to solve the problems, and then you solve the equation and calculate the quantity asked in the question. And of course, usually you will always skip these steps. Never ever skip these steps, okay? Always after you have done from point one until this one, always check your answer again. Okay? Make sure that you have correct, you have the correct answer, you have calculated the correct value, you have used your calculator correctly. Okay, so those are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps that you will always use when you are solving your material balance problem. Okay, so for today, I'll stop here. We'll continue our class tomorrow where we look at each of this step in more detail okay if you have any questions you can ask me
you have no questions then we can end our class today and we will meet tomorrow at two o'clock